Hello and welcome to this edition of the Hope Connection. I'm your host, Harry Jackson. On today's broadcast, we're going to discuss two keys to walking deeper with God, deepening our spiritual lives and winning in every arena of our lives. It's so important to believe that God wants us to prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. God wants to strengthen us and meet every need that we have through our personal relationship with Christ. Equally important, though, is properly relating to other Christians and being a part of the body of Christ in a local church. You can experience a freshness in your relationship with God and his people today. So to start, turn with me to Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10, so that we can look at this a little bit further and you'll grasp the meaning of the scripture. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, end of quote. Well, as we look at this, I believe that it's very, very important for us to grab hold of the passage and the understanding of what Paul, the great apostle, was looking for. There are four key phrases in the text. A, rooted and built up. B, established in the faith. C, maintaining an attitude of thankfulness. And D, avoiding worldly philosophies, traditions of men, spiritual powers that are not of Christ. Now, I want to go back over those just for a moment. And I, I think that we often miss what's really being said in these four things that I just kind of ticked off quickly. First, being rooted and built up. And that means we must be born again. We'll come back to that at the very end of the program. There has to be that sense that we've been transformed on the inside. A lot of people are talking about racism in this generation, racism in this moment. And we forget that racism is a heart condition. It's a spiritual problem that singing we are the world is not going to heal America. Saying we're already one is not going to heal America. We are not one. We are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. And part of the fallen sin nature is to hate people that don't look like, sound like, act like you. But if we're rooted and built up, born again and anchored in Jesus. It means something. Second, established in the faith. That establishment means that we have an understanding of what the key things about our faith are, and we know the doctrine of our faith. Not just I can believe God for this and any other, but that we understand the basic parameters of why our prayers work, for example, and how God is honor bound to honor his word and to honor what we pray about. That's so incredibly significant. C, maintaining an attitude of thankfulness that in the midst of darkness, we don't get negative and pessimistic, but rather we give thanks to God, not for all the evil that comes into our world, but thankfully we give grace and thanks to him saying, Lord, I thank you that you're in charge. You're in control over everything that's happening in my life. And then D, avoiding worldly philosophies, traditions of men, spiritual powers that are not of Christ. In other words, having a carnal or a occult or a mindset of other religious traditions can, in a sense, unplug you from the power of God that is meant to permeate your and my being. Now, there are three things that we're going to launch uh, us deeper into God. Three things. A, an understanding of the power of covenant. The understanding of the power of covenant, and that is the covering, 
uh, idea of an umbrella that it depicts a covenant with God. We'll come back to that. Second, the power that covenant is like a wireless charger that infusing us on the inside with power, the power of covenant. Second major point that will help us grow is understanding that there are five key factors to personal growth. Let me tick those off quickly. If you got a, a pencil and paper, write them down. One, the practical teaching of the word of God. Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Psalm 119 verse 100. I have more understanding than the elders for I obey your precepts. Then we also have spiritual disciplines, teaching of the word of God, but the disciplines of fasting, prayer, giving, personal worship, very, very important. Third, my involvement in personal ministry is critical. I'm going to grow as I'm doing something with my spiritual gifts, as I'm working under the energy of the spirit of God. We don't work for salvation, but we work out our salvation in fear and trembling. As I serve the Lord, as I serve in my local church, as I use my natural and spiritual gifts, God expands and enlarges, sort of like building up, doing exercises, going to the gym. I grow and get spiritually fit by using spiritual gifts. There's practical faith development. There's involvement in everyday ministry that happens that deepens my walk with God. I learn to serve under authority that increases my humility and I become selfless and like Jesus in what I do. Four, I need to understand that providential relationships are key. Friends, uh, all kinds of uh, relationships like counselors, mentees are very, very important. Now, I don't have time to go into all I'd like to go into from the book of Proverbs. Uh, there are passages that say things like this. A quarrelsome wife is like the dripping of a leaky roof in a rainstorm. It goes on to say restraining her is like restraining the wind or grasping oil with the hand. Guys, watch out. Don't quote that scripture too close to your wife. She might reach out and slap you one. No, it, it, it's important for us to understand that relationships either become irritants or if we stand in the word of God and let God transform us, they become stepping stones toward growth. Iron sharpens iron is another scripture that talks about how we are developed through relationships. And then I believe we are, are going to talk about significant uh, moments in our lives, significant experiences shape us as we are dealing with spiritual growth. I'll call them pivotal circumstances. Victories based upon the word of God teach us lifelong principles, but Sometimes when we are developing, we miss the real point. Let me give you an example before our break right now in just a couple of moments. And that is Samson. Remember the story of Samson? Samson was anointed by God. He fought the Philistines, but he never fully understood the necessity of personal holiness. Samson's first victory was that he killed a thousand men. Imagine that one guy, a thousand men with the jawbone of a donkey. And there's a supernatural authority, but he never was able to discern the difference between his personal anger and God's desire for national justice. So Samson had to go through the trauma of being betrayed by Delilah, Delilah having his eyes poked out, being taken into captivity by the Philistines, and then repenting before he get moved into the final greatest moment of his life. Many of us need to recognize that God wants to teach us something through pivotal moments in our lives. But if we don't listen to mentors, we don't listen to disciples, we don't let people train us in how to interpret what's going on in our lives, Sometimes we can miss the will of God. On that somber note, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. 
Whenever good news is slow in coming, when bad circumstances don't seem to improve, when we feel forsaken and powerless, Bishop Jackson wants you to know that the change you long for can be yours. For a donation of $25 or more, we will send you this inspirational book titled, You Were Born For More. Discover six steps to breaking through to your destiny. Bishop Jackson teaches you to open the pathway to blessings, draw closer to Christ, how to grow in love and endurance, and how you can experience the favor of God. Call right now. The number is 240-845-0388 or go to the website at thehopeconnection.org. If you would like to write us, the address is on the screen. God wants us to experience His love, to be a light to the world, and this book will guide you in that purpose. You will believe again and discover that you were truly born for more. Welcome back to the show. Today we've been discussing keys to walking with God, how to grow in the Lord. At my church, Hope Christian Church, we're focused on many things, but there are three key things. And this is evolving for us. Number one, turning the hearts of youth and families to God and each other. It's so important that we recognize that everything in Christianity revolves around the heart, turning our hearts to God, letting God work within us. Grace is not just forgiveness of past. That's really mercy. Grace is God's empowerment, enablement to live and overcoming in a holy life. Number two, developing our God-given, God-given, God-given potential in order to win in every arena or area of our lives. We have potential. And I believe that many of us in America today, I pastor a church with about 25 different nationalities. I'm believing God now for more Asians to come in. Uh, some months ago, I was at a meeting outside, long story short, uh, some people who lived in our area who happened to be of Chinese descent started coming. One of my associate pastor is of Chinese descent. And now we have a growing number of people of Chinese descent and other uh, Asian ethnicities coming to our church. And so we're learning how to develop people so that they can win and in life, and they can be assigned, anointed, appointed, directed to go back into different communities that I may not be able to touch, go back into career areas that I don't know anything about. Third area is we're advancing the kingdom of God first in our circle of influences, then to nations abroad. First, I've got some wonderful people from Nigeria, and from Ghana, and from Liberia. And we're looking up now and we're seeing people from their homelands coming in, new and recent immigrants coming in. And I believe that God is going to use us in the days ahead to reach out to French-speaking Africa. I took French myself for about six years in school. And I believe there's a work for us to do centering in on developing people sending them forth to their sphere of influence, their mountain of authority, they'll make a difference. But the key is discipling these people so that they'll be in touch with the Christ that lives with them, the God, Jesus, living in their heart, and that we have hands-on mentoring process. You know, our local church multiplies our personal spiritual protection as well, and our personal power through covenant. And that's significant. So often around the Washington DC area, I think we've had an emphasis on personal spiritual maturity and personally getting a hold of teaching. And it's been for some an academic kind of thing. It's becoming for others of us a new thing, a spiritual thing. We're learning that we have to be discipled, disciple others, and we're developing more of a, a discipleship process. Discipleship connects the three circles, if you will, a covenant. Our personal covenant with Christ, our covenant with relationship with our own families, and our corporate power or corporate 
covenant with Christ's entire body and his church. Recently, I was in a meeting uh, that was hosted, a solemn assembly by Dr. Tony Evans from Dallas, Texas. And he was having a meeting right in the greater Washington, D.C. area. He graciously invited me to be a speaker at that meeting. I had been at a national uh, convocation at Dr. Evans' church down in Dallas or in the Dallas area, and it was internationally streamed and broadcast. It was a fantastic event of prayer, a solemn assembly. <clears throat> but I became convicted in a very real way that it was time for me and Hope Christian Church to intentionally set up a structure so that the thousands of people that are beginning to come into our local assembly and the people that we're touching around the nations of the world will have a way of being connected to a reproductive process. One of friends of mine in this DC area pastors a church called the Soul Factory. And I, I love the name because factory implies that something is being made. Soul, we all know, that speaks of the inner life of man. But when you say soul factory, you say, what in the world is a soul factory? I thought only God can make souls. That's true. Only God can create the spirit, soul, and body that are the part of the tripartite uh, development of and nature of a man. But disciples are made. Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations. In other words, if you're going to transform a culture like America needs to be transformed right now, we need to overcome classism, racism, sex or sexism, all kinds of biases that will never happen unless the church makes disciples. We have the phrase come as you are in your family car <laughs> as the way we think about church. You know, come on. Remember when Bob Shuler, maybe some of you are too young, had church in a uh, outside movie theater kind of setup, and just like people would go to a movie theater and sit in the car, everything is the way they wanted. They'd be comfortable. They watch a movie. Bob Shuler, Robert Shuler, the founder of the Crystal Cathedral, his grandson is on TV these days. Uh, they really did what they could to make it convenient for people to come to church. But if you come to church and you don't let the church make you, transform you, develop your soul in a different way, you'll remain a person who is born again, but has not taken on the full image of Christ. Well, the covenant that we're talking about is like two different things. It's like an umbrella and a wireless charger, an umbrella and a wireless charger. Think about it this way. An umbrella, it shields us from things in the atmosphere, rain, snow, weather that's bad. An umbrella is protective. A wireless charger empowers from the inside out. Our covenant with a local church protects us from demonic influences, protects us from things that are in the general atmosphere, protects us from outworking of evil that's in the land, from principalities and powers, and for spiritual wickedness in high places. But also that wireless charger infuses us with a sense of inward strength and authority that comes from the spirit of the living God. Have you ever thought about this? Every church has a unique calling. Every church, therefore, if you're a member in right standing, rightly aligned with that church, infuses. Mm, there's a download into your life of whatever the strength of that church is, that God-given strength of that church. Some churches are evangelistically equipped on a very high level. Other churches have worship going on on the inside of them, intimacy with God. Other churches have an anointing for prayer and breakthrough. It's amazing. And I'm so very thankful that I'm part of a local church. But because of the calling that we are anointed to do, there's a specific assignment that's been given our church, your church, and any church that you're really connected with. And there is a sphere that you are to operate in your home, in your church, in your community, 
where you'll come alive in the power of the Holy Spirit when you are properly aligned. And we have to choose to grow, choose to be under authority in our local church. Now, every covenant has five different dimensions. I'm going to tick through these very, very quickly. And every covenant, remember there are three covenants, personal covenant, family covenant, and church covenant we enter into. They must be transcendent. They are above everything. They transform everything. They're hierarchical. That means we submit to the higher power we learn to obey and follow. They have promises and terms. There are consequences if violated. And every covenant applies generationally. Your children's children will be blessed. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this break. Whenever good news is slow in coming, when bad circumstances don't seem to improve, when we feel forsaken and powerless, Bishop Jackson wants you to know that the change you long for can be yours. For a donation of $25 or more, we will send you this inspirational book titled, You Were Born For More. Discover six steps to breaking through to your destiny. Bishop Jackson teaches you to open the pathway to blessings, draw closer to Christ, how to grow in love and endurance, and how you can experience the favor of God. Call right now. The number is 240-845-0388 or go to the website at thehopeconnection.org. If you would like to write us, the address is on the screen. God wants us to experience His love, to be a light to the world, and this book will guide you in that purpose. You will believe again and discover that you were truly born for more. Welcome back. I'm glad that you stuck with us. This is the most important part of this entire program today. I believe we're on the verge of a great awakening in America. Right now, battle lines are being drawn between the true church and the false church. There are a lot of churches that are trying to be socially active without a spiritual foundation. And then there are other churches that are trying to get a spiritual foundation and they are not really doing anything about the culture. But what we found in the previous awakenings in America is that what God did is he required that the born again community put their faith into action. I can't help but remember the story of Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote the story of Uncle Tom's Cabin and how that that story moved all the inhabitants of Maine and New England into a mode where they, many of them were white, felt compelled to enter the Civil War and to fight for the freedom of African-Americans and others and it wasn't because those folks were like them, but they believed that they had a God ordained uh, calling to free and create justice for those who are downtrodden and oppressed in the culture. I wonder what would happen in America if American Christians united in love and then instead of fighting with arms, they went to the ballots, they went to the streets and they decided we're going to restore the communities in our nation, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Chicago, New York City, and beyond. We're going to hire and train people for work. We're going to restore returning citizens from prison. I believe that the church is in the place where we're going to disciple a generation of grassroots soldiers that are going to war with a war that's based on love. We did a huge TED Talk that's now been seen by tens of thousands, way in excess of 50,000 people at this juncture. We've seen this 16-minute long TED Talk where we talk about the healing power of love. And I want to encourage you, get into a local church, be a part of a local church, be mobilized, be equipped first to live a life that is fulfilling in that house, then second, to be a light to your family, and then third, to transform the culture as radical revolutionaries for Jesus. And we're gonna win this war without a bayonet, without a sword, without a gun, but with the power of Christian love. But in order to do that, something has to happen. 
Something called salvation has got to transpire in your life. And so if you've never received Jesus as Lord, or if you don't know any difference before church, after church, today you can know for sure that you're born again. Bow your head. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, just repeat after me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, and I asked him to come into my life to be Lord of my life. If you just prayed that prayer with me, we want to connect with you. Pick up the phone and call us at the number on your screen. Our team is waiting to talk with you about your soul, about your salvation. But you can also reach out to us online at thehopeconnection.org. That's thehopeconnection.org. Or on Facebook at Grow With Hope. And I want to put a copy of today's message or let you download a similar teaching right there where you are. You need this series to build up your faith. And I want you to reach out to us by phone or on the web. Better yet, join us this Sunday morning at one of our, our dynamic services. Remember this, we're saving a seat just for you. We're going to change America. I believe by faith, we're going to shake America. And this America is going to experience the power of Christ. And we're going to live out not just Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream, but we're going to live out the dream that's on the heart of God. Thank you for tuning in today. And we'll see you again next time on The Hope Connection. God bless you. Thank you for joining Bishop Jackson today. The preceding program has been brought to you by the partners and friends of the Hope Connection. For more information, please visit our website at www.thehopeconnection.org. Join us next week for an exciting adventure into God's Word.